Hello and welcome to the Performer's Guide. My name is Kristen Rayling, and in this video, we will be discussing choosing your fonts. So here's an example of all the different kind of styles of fonts we're gonna be going over. And you can already immediately see how the fonts decide your personality of your business and your business personality will also help you choose your fonts. And so as we're going through this video, I really want you to keep in mind of your brand personality and how you're gonna speak to your audience through that personality with which type of fonts, okay? Um, so first we have letters and letters become words and words become our message. And as we're speaking our message, the way that it's shaped can even shape the way that we view a brand in the way that it's giving its message. And so first you really want to think about what is your brand? What is its personality? And how can your font speak to the personality of your brand? And in general, there are six basic font personality styles to choose from. We've got a uh, serif, sans serif, slab serif, script, handwritten, and decorative. Now you can see here serif is really classic style. So um, if you're a textbook, educational, something of that sort, something that says I've been here for a while, I'm a classic business, you'll go with something like a serif modern, sleek, uh, you'll choose something in the sans serif category. If your business is bold and you wanna really stand out, you're gonna choose a slab serif style font. And if you are wanting to appear elegant, you will choose a script style font. Uh, handwritten appears more informal, friendly, uh, youthful, and decorative can be really dramatic and really stands out um, the most among the different font personalities. And we're gonna go over those in more depth um, in a little bit as well. So first you're gonna kind of choose which font personality you'll want. And then you're gonna think about the weight okay um and so the font weight is directly correlate correlated with a weight value and so if your font is very thin it'll be closer to a 100 size weight value and it goes all the way up from thin extra light light semi-light normal medium, semi-bold, bold, extra bold, black, extra black. And so next you're just gonna kind of wanna decide for each situation, how much font weight are we gonna give to each style font? Then we've got the width of the font. Uh, um, you can see how the same word with different um, length can make the same word a little bit longer or shorter. So you, you can decide, do you, I want my logo or my business name to be really tight and condensed or do I want it to take up a lot of space? When you combine the font width with the font weight, then you get the actual font depth, the full depth of the font. And so here you can see, we've got the weight axis and we've got the width axis. And when we combine them, we get um, 
a wide variety of ways that we can represent the same letter. And so here uh, with G, you can see that again, how thin or thick the letters can be can dramatically change the way the letter is viewed. And so here you can see in just the word ah, um, see the A height increases um, and the H and the apostrophe or the exclamation point, they're all the same height. Like if you were to put a line above them, they're all the same height, but they take up different amounts of space in different parts of the lettering. Then we have font sizes. And so any font width and weight could be any size, you know? So you could choose the font width and weight, and then you could have different size um, font. And so this is what you usually think of when you're typing in Google Docs, or if you're looking in Canva or doing any sort of basic editing and you change the font size, right? Um, so that'll change everything in proportion to whatever weight and width you've just chosen in the font that you've chosen. So here you can see, you can go all the way as small as five, all the way up to 72. And the ones on the left are for basic text typing um, in like a document, a book, um, descriptions, um, basic things that you would type tend to be best viewed um, in a, they say five to 14, but I think that, you know, five to seven is usually quite hard for even some people. So, um, but then you have the display type, which is really where we're going for when we're talking about our logos and creating our press kit and our marketing materials, our website is gonna use a whole wide variety of the display type font size. So here you can see um, basic font sizing and what it's called. Um, so we've got the header, which is the logo, your main title, uh, banner. Then you've got the second heading or subheader. And then you've got the body or um, caption. And then, so on the left is more like writing in a document or um, just like a letter, normal, post, email. Um, and then the right is more for like websites. They call them different heading sizes. And so you've got heading one, heading two, three, four, five, six. And then you also have your body caption. Um, so really you have, you know, let's see, one, two, three, six about 10 different font sizes that you could choose and utilize for your business. And in basic typographic scale, um, you wanna choose your font sizing in a two to three ratio um, in a sizing scale. And that creates good visual scale so one font isn't like way huge and the other one's super super small um, you want them to be relatively in this two to three ratio so now we're going to go back to the typeface classifications and different types of fonts that you can choose and basically there's four main ones um, and then there's two more that I actually just didn't add on here, but I showed you in the beginning there. We've got the fonts with serifs, fonts without, 
um, scripts, handwritten, decorative, and we're going to go over each one here. So you can see the difference between a serif and a sans serif lies in the additional lines that come off of the sides of the lettering. And so if you're going for that more classic look, remember, um, textbook style, old world, fancy, I've been here for a while, I'm a classic business brand, you're going to go with something in the serif font. If you're new, modern, sleek, um, tech companies tend to also use sans serif, just thin lines, narrow, um, not adding on these extra um, lines off the end. Some popular serif fonts are these ones here, New Times Roman, Garamond, Playfair Display, um, Baskerville, Laura, Merriweather. You could look these up and they're gonna be most likely in most programs and are easily recognized as serif fonts. So here's some brands that use serif. You can see Time Magazine, Vogue, those are publications. Those type of businesses tend to do well with using a serif font. And you'll notice in the performer's guide, that's the font that I've chosen for this brand um, due to its educational publications. And then you've got Tiffany and Co. Again, they want you to feel like it's a classic piece of jewelry that is timeless. Then we've got sans serif. And again, those are the ones that um, are a little bit sleeker and more modern. Those are Havelka, Ariel, um, Open Sans, Roboto, Source Sans Pro. These are just a few of the popular fonts you're likely to find in most programs. And here are some brands that use sans fonts. Um, Facebook, Google, Netflix, Spotify. These businesses tend to be known and thought of as sleek, modern, new age businesses. Then we've got the serif slab fonts. And these ones are just a little bit poppier, right? Um, they're a little bit bolder and have a little bit thicker lines coming off of the of the letters and just kind of have like a little bit more character. Um, so some popular ones um, in the slab serif category are Rockwell, Roboto Slab, Courier New, and Arvo. And here's some brands that use the serif slab, Volvo, Sony, Honda. Um, those are kind of known as like the more like fun, um, bold brands. You know, like Volvo is known as um, kind of a safer company as well. And so I feel like the roundedness kind of feels like you know, like safer and like rounded, you know, like rounded edges vibe. Um, then we've got script. Script is um, kind of looks like graffiti ish. It's close to handwritten, but it's closer to like calligraphy. Um, and I just love script fonts, I think they're really beautiful. Um, my personal brand utilizes a script font as just my personal signature, um, which I guess kind of falls into handwritten fonts, but mine's more cursive-y, so I think it falls more into script fonts. Some popular script fonts are Lucinda Script, Pacifico, Allura, Dancing Script, and Satisfy. Some popular brands that utilize this um, brand font are Johnson & Johnson, Cadillac, Instagram, 
and Ford. Then we've got handwritten fonts, um, where script fonts are a little bit more upscale handwritten in the calligraphy, graffiti style writing. Um, handwritten fonts are typically not cursive, although you can see a couple of them are, but tend to more look like a child wrote them or someone of a youthful nature um, that perhaps anyone could have written it. And it makes it a very relatable um, handwriting font if you're just trying to feel like, I'm one of the guys, I'm one of you, um, I'm a relatable brand. You're gonna wanna have something um, casual with a handwritten font. Some uh, popular handwritten fonts are New Wave, uh, Permanent Marker, Patrick Hand, um, Amatic, Amatic SC, just another hand. Um, you can also just type in any of these font themes into Google and they'll give you a lot of different ideas as well. Then we've got decorative fonts. Decorative fonts are not likely to be found. Well, I guess that's not true. There are a bunch in Google um, Drive and Canva, but these are oftentimes handwritten or created through digital design, um, oftentimes not found in just a classic um, app or whatever. And so here are some examples of this style of font. And you can see there can be a lot of different ways that you can express this. It's often done in this like negative space um, or just some sort of specific time period chosen. Um, some fun decorative fonts that are available um, pretty regularly, Frederica, Fredoka one, Lobster two, Bangers. I don't know who chooses these decorative font names in general, but I think that sounds like a fun job. <laughs> um, here's some brands that use decorative fonts. You can see IBM, Disney, Lego. These people, these brands, organizations, corporations, they um, probably created these by hand and paid a designer to create something very specific. And so I think decorative fonts are a really excellent way to go for a brand name that really stands out from the rest. Um, and then utilizing the other styles of fonts to um, fill in the other parts of your business. So again, we've got the different fonts and their personalities. So you wanna think back to what are your brand personality and how can I express that through my font choices? And you can use different fonts for different reasons, for different campaigns, uh, speaking to a different audience, a different target market, time of year, all of these things could influence what font you choose and when, but the more that you can make it reliable, consistent, and use similar ones over and over, people can feel your brand's message without even having to see the words necessarily. And so serif fonts, they're classic, traditional, and trustworthy. The sans serif fonts are modern, clean, and minimal. Then we've got the slab serif, bold, quirky, confident, script, elegant, unique. I think of a signature. Handwritten fonts, informal, artistic. Then we've got decorative fonts, very stylized, distinctive, and dramatic. So then we have typographical emphasis. You can also add more personality, more emphasis on specific words, specific lines, things you're trying to draw 
your target market's attention to. And so these basic ones are bolding your words, italicizing them, underline, or striking through, which is a common one with the decorative fonts. And so here you can see just the differences of the same letters in different fonts and how they give a completely different personality. Then we've got underlining um, or these just boxes, edging, corners, framing. Um, you can utilize all of these types um, of symbols and how are you gonna express your business without words, but with just lines, circles, squares, triangles, shapes. Uh, and we're gonna go over more in the emblems in the next video, but below the emblem can also have an accentuation of a decorative underline. Here you can see some decorative fonts that utilize that straight through the middle, like it's crossed out with a negative space. Um, you can also cross it out with just like positive space, like someone has scratched a line through your brand name. And then we've got the different font type styles. And here you can see some type styles um, in their classic names and just how many different ways we can portray different words. So type styles are basically like trademarks, um, style of writing that when you look at it, you just immediately think of that business, brand, movie, book, whatever. So like Harry Potter comes to mind, Disney, Aladdin, Frozen, Pirates of the Caribbean, Shrek, Jurassic Park. Like these are all styles that you are able to use, but they will obviously cause your consumers to subconsciously think about a different brand style. So you could also literally draw your own style of font for literally every letter, like how I showed earlier, and you can just literally write out every letter um, and create your own type style. Uh, now we're gonna go over just some popular fonts for marketing in general. Um, so here we're just gonna go over, I just found these different um, little blurbs that tell you how to pair different fonts with each other. And so you'll probably just like wanna go back and clip through these later while you're choosing your fonts. Um, but you can pair a really bold serif header with a nondescript sans serif subheader. And this will give you a really trustworthy feel. And this is what I naturally went towards not even knowing anything about fonts, honestly. Um, I chose a serif header and it's got that, the font, the fancy extra lines. But then for the writing, I keep it simple because you're doing a lot of reading and you don't want to have to kind of decipher fancier writing when you're reading a lot of bold text, you know. Um, and then here's some examples of um, font combinations. And it's actually really funny. The first one they put up here is my font is my font for the performer's guide, April Fat Face. That's that is the header that I use. Uh, so I just thought that was really funny. And they actually put it in there twice as an example for a good header. I didn't even realize it was so popular. Makes me laugh, maybe think, like, oh, maybe I should choose a different one. And also, oh, I've got good taste. <laughs> um, so you could choose something like April Fat Face with Montserrat or Quicksand, um, or you can go Rosa One with Railway. 
Um, maybe I'll choose railway since my last name is railing. Or you can use a single minimal sans serif font for your whole look. So your um, title, subheader, the, the body, signature, everything is corporate, professional, modern, sleek. If you're trying to go to corporate events, that's how you're going to want your website to look. Some good combinations of double sans serif font pairings are um, Economica Bold with regular, uh, Montserrat Regular with Bold, um, Source Sans Pro, Bold and Regular. You can see how you're choosing sort of the same font in the bold version and the regular version and then just different sizing. And so it gives a very clean, sleek look all the way down there's no change to the eye just size changing or you could use a really thin stylized sans serif font for a really high-end elegant and so you remember the font width and weight you would choose something in a really light light like as light as you can for something super thin So if you're looking for that style font, um, the thinnest ones available, the Julia Sans One, Playfair Display, uh, Warre One, Veranda. It's really hard to pronounce some of these names, man. I've only read them, not said them out loud. So if you want to feel youthful, friendly, you're going to stick with the rounded sans serif font. Um, these ones are thicker. So here's a couple fun, thicker rounded font pairings, quicksand bold with open sans, um, Fredoka one with Montserrat, quicksand bold with quicksand regular. Then we've got a traditional serif font for conservative and trustworthy. And so if I want all of my lettering to have that serif feel, um, it'll feel more, again, more trustworthy because it's consistent down the whole thing. People will always know what to get from you. And uh, remember, it's the more classic conservative choice for brands. Some good serif fonts that work really well with more traditional business vibes is E.B. Garamond, Playfair Display, Baskerville, and Wire One. Now we're going to get into free versus licensed fonts. All of the fonts that I've suggested are free fonts, uh, but some of them might be licensed fonts like the Disney themed ones. Those might be licensed fonts. Um, once you get into the licensed fonts realm, there are more options of fonts to choose from. So here's some free areas you can get fonts, Google fonts, font squirrel, font library. Um, also when you're just in Google Docs, Google Drive, Canva, uh, they just have tons of free fonts already available. And it's an amazing way to start out, to get your fonts for free, because um, who doesn't love free fonts? And it's a great way just to get it started so that you're just getting your business going. However, eventually doing paid licensed fonts might be a better way to create a very eye-catching brand that stands out among the rest who are using the free fonts. And so if you wanted to step up your brand's image, you can use uh, Adobe fonts, Linotype, fonts.com. You can also draw your own fonts, like I've said before, and then upload them to the program that you're building your marketing campaigns on. And if you are unsure how to do that, you could hire a digital 
designer who's really well versed in like Photoshop or creating fonts and they'll be able to pop out um, those fonts for you. You just give them the drawn out ones and they'll be able to um, give you the digital version. And so that's what your homework is to figure out which fonts that you want to choose for your business and lay them out for either your digital designer to upload, or you can just start utilizing them right in your marketing campaign programs. And so once again, my name is Kristen Railing. This is the Performer's Guide. And I hope this video gave you more insight onto the types of fonts available to your business and how you can utilize them to express your brand's personality.